the S and P 500 and the Nasdaq 100. As you see, we're clearly in that strong uptrend on the S and P. You go into Q's and you can see very similar structure, a little bit of a broader range, but overall holding up and only creating these demand zones on the downside, meaning that we just continue to break highs and make higher highs and higher lows. Now, when we go into something like futures, I think you get a little bit of a better look at exactly what's taking place here. And as you zoom into Nasdaq, you get a lot of those answers. Now, what I will say is that Nasdaq has definitely been dominating since Friday, Friday and today, holding up most of the strength while we look at ES and Dow you know, not doing the best here, right? So I look at ES, I go really quick and show you ES more on the downside, Dow, same thing, downside, right? And also Dow losing previous all-time highs established on February 24th, where in comparison, you know, ES is still over that level well above from February or actually March 24th or, 20 or 8th there as well. So again, local highs still holding on ES while Dow's pulling back. NQ hasn't really made those yet. Um, so that's where you're at and you're kind of just sidetracking. ES is holding up all things considered the best. So what you want to see here in the short term, you want to see if the NASDAQ can hold above basically 18.5 flat. Can that hold? We saw a few little tests here on the day, but ultimately upon market open, we held that level for the remainder, a little sell off here at the end of the day, but still holding. Now you can see we also made a little bit of a supply level up here as well. And if you're interested in these indicators, the link is down below for Lux Algo for all the custom indicators and our scalping volume one down here as well. I just don't use it in the daily videos because it's not necessary for going back over the market unless the volume was huge that day. Um, so those are the big things there. Going into SPY, giving you a better example here, SPY could start to get ugly. Um, so I do want to highlight this right now. That's going to be your next very major level on the S&P. I want to make that really clear. Now, you can also see I already knew on the 15 minute that you had this little bit of like a demand kind of established or you based and then you gapped up. But I hate considering supply and demands based on gaps. That's why you don't see me mention them that much. But what I'd be looking for really clear here is for SPY to get below uh, 519.5 and then pushing down into the uh, 518 marker. Um, so that would be the biggest thing for me again, not a lot of range to go, but that's what I'd be looking for. And then after that down into 517 and then possibly down to this illiquid area all into 5165. So you have three targets on the downside if you actually get selling, but I want to clarify and make sure you understand you have to get the break and retest for continuation down. Those are the biggest factors here. I have to say that over and over. Now, volume over the past few days has been garbage. Okay, it's been straight dog water, terrible. Can't really say anything else here. Um, 40 million here on the day or record breaking levels. Now, what I will say is this is only a four day week. So it makes sense while we're getting less volume, but that's terrible. And I'll, I'll refresh here. You'll get some more in the after hours, but it's not going to be much. So literally one of your worst volume days in months including half days um, from Thanksgiving. So that's crazy. Friday, you had a little bit of a pick me up, but it still wasn't incredible. And the remainder of last week was just kind of pathetic too. When we look at spies volume via edge fulls data, you can see that volume typically trends up throughout the week. And last week was a little bit of an anomaly, really doing much of nothing, which you had fed the fed meeting. But even after that, nothing kicked in Thursday and Friday, which was very weird, even with the buying that did occur on Thursday. And then that happened on the NASDAQ on Friday. So weird action all in all, um, but again, starting the same trend with that low volume. Now, again, another thing that was very strange about this was the price action that we received on um, on Friday. Very weird action. Now, Thursday is typically very green for SPY, highest percent next to Mondays. Today, also for SPY, I believe, I, I believe it was considered a red day. Did we end the day red? You did. So again, a red day on SPY. Another little bit of an anomaly, right? Weird action. But weird action happens when the SPY's volume is like this. When you get abnormally low, abnormally high volume, you're going to get weird action. So it shouldn't really surprise you, especially in a holiday weekend, okay? But also, too, as you can see, we have higher volume into the week. And then also Fridays and Thursdays are some of our strongest days. Whereas if we go to the daily, you go look at Fridays and Thursdays, both of those were red. You open up strong, close weak, close weak on the S&P specifically. Very strange, again, abnormal behavior. So again, red days on those days and some of your worst volume. You can actually see th Friday or Thursday, even though Thursday was your strongest day as far as gapping up, no volume, no continuation from buyers. Now, this isn't a sign to panic for me because, again, as long as we are in this uptrend on the daily, we have to be able to like identify like, you know, the 
you know, the writing on the wall, right? It's clearly still bullish, higher lows, higher highs. So until we start breaking, you know, 508, 509, I don't think there's a bear case out there on the S&P. You know, the you no know, uh, cues got to break below 432, 433. Until then, there's not really a bear case on specifically the NASDAQ. That's just my opinion going over the clear charts. And whoever wants to say, like, I don't care what's fundamentally going on with the economy and the government. I'm just saying the facts that are out there right now um, and based on just the data, how we've moved and how we continue to move. So, again, that's what I'm viewing there. Really quickly going into DXY, some of the things here. DXY is holding support, 104.17. Uh, uh, the U.S. 30-year yield, pretty interesting. You're just sitting flat at our level as well. The yields, what I will say, 30-year looks like a bear flag on the higher time frames. It looks like a very clear down, consolidate, breakdown possible. If you look at TLT, a very good viewpoint of this as well, looks like a giant and bull flag to the upside, holding your key level of 92. So really both of those things are holding their key levels. Up in the mix, I do believe the market is expecting cuts to happen sooner than later, especially based on what Powell said. So that's why I continue to remain net bullish on the overall market with how we've structurally been moving. Okay, so until those few things can happen that I just covered, I have to remain looking for upside. Okay, now all, all the links for everything that you've seen in this video are all down below, so make sure you check them out. But I do want to say right now, if you're not following on Twitter, I recommend doing so. I don't like to plug too much of our stuff, but Twitter's free, guys. Totally free game. And on the first, we'll be releasing Discord spots. But yeah, just this morning, uh, Coinbase Cup and Handle called this out on Discord. Decided to post this just kind of vaguely for free. But again, from 270, you ended up running into highs of like two. I believe 282 on the day, but you know, back into 279, 282, just off rip. A lot of free game. A lot of stuff being posted over here. Crypto, everything in regards over there as well. Now. I do want to go over specific stocks and equities that I'm liking. But first, I do want to cover broadly Bitcoin because I know this has had some pretty crazy movement. Now, Bitcoin's really simple. In my opinion, it's one of the simplest charts to look at. Um, and all I'm looking at are basically three levels here. So number one on the daily, you're pushing up. And I do use uh, Bitcoin as a metric of risk on in the market, just to let you guys know. Um, so you're making higher lows from the bottom you established in your 60K, which was basically your lows here before you shot up. Now you're bouncing back up. So you have three, two levels really I'm watching, okay? Number one, 64K, you remounted that one with ease. I believe this was Saturday, Sunday. You broke, retested, shot up. Next level, 69.2K. It was your previous high before the big crash back down to 61K, and then you ran back into 60 or 72. Okay, you mounted that one, another big mount. And then now I'm like, I'm trying to find a middle ground. And so I have my little retest here, and then as well as the high here. So 70.6, not the biggest level. I would say these two are major, 69.2 and 64. But I'm trying to find a metric to hold up here to see the push to all-time highs. I do believe Bitcoin is incredibly bullish. Based on other charts, Bitcoin halving charts, I will say this is definitely abnormal. Um, I 100% have to say that. Um, this is abnormal behavior to what we've typically had. Everyone likes to say, you know, Bitcoin is going to dump when it has halving, this and that. And I'm just like, I don't really know what else to say, um, you know, but all in all, Bitcoin typically, I'm trying to find this chart real quick for you guys, but Bitcoin's had its best moves after having, right? I can use any of these charts, but anyways, as you can see, let me come down to this chart, da, 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 da. but yeah, so really quick right here, let me just zoom in so you can see, um, and let's just... You have to look just from the side, sorry. Um, but you can see, you've halved right here, you shot up to 1,000. You halved here at around, what is that, 1,000, you push into 20, you know, locally, like 20, 12,000, right? You halved here, you ended up pushing into like 72, right? You went crazy, 70, 69,000. So again, uh, I'm just saying, makes sense based on previous times that we probably get some continuation after having. Now we've seen some dips after having, right after immediately, and then followed by strong pumps. So I'm not gonna make a prediction there, but I do think Bitcoin looks really good. Um, to let you guys know the cryptos that I personally own, I got some ICP, 
AVAX, Solana, and then some small meme coins as well. Um, but I do most of that stuff on TikTok to let you guys know. Um, but yeah, let's get into uh, the equity name specifically. Number one, NVIDIA um, has been my strongest overall name, my favorite name to trade. Uh, simply, it's really that simple, okay? So go to the hourly, look at this morning, had some great action overall here. So you had the bull flag today, again, called out in Discord as well. Um, I like to be as transparent as possible with you guys so you guys can see. I'm never trying to lie to you guys <laughs> at all. So again, this morning, a few things I posted. You had Coinbase cup and handle went crazy, like I mentioned. You also had NVIDIA on the breakout here as well that I called out. Bull flag over 946, very bullish. You ended up breaking, pushing up into 967. I think you're going to have an all-time all high $1,000 push here on NVIDIA. I've been saying this since basically you know 880 lower so again very bullish there now this is the interesting part of broad markets now we saw the bad news with amd with the china ban now we don't know how much this is going to directly influence them but what i will say is under 174.7 it's a downside play as simple as that um with targets around 165 164.5 I can only say that so many times, but above this, I'm not trying to go short. Actually, in this range right here between 185 and 174.7, I'm not looking to trade AMD whatsoever. It's a chop fest. Above 185, it's a long. It's that simple. Um, keep that in the back of your mind. Intel doing very similar things. I wanted to go short on Intel today, but you just never got the confirmation. So I wanted to see the break and retest of the zone. But you just kept going up, bouncing with the rest of the market, and semiconductors were just strong today, um, specifically NVIDIA, obviously. Um, but yeah, so if you start breaking back below 41 and retest and hold below that, then I'm targeting 40, then 39. But again, I'm not trying to force a play. I'm not trying to go short when a name is only going up or only balancing. You have to see confirmation, and I have a lot of educational videos here, so hopefully you guys can understand that confirmation strategy as well, which I cover in almost every video. Um, Apple, not super interested. You are looking for a 168 bounce hopefully um to get bullish above one, uh, 176 minimum the end um microsoft pretty bearish terrible day here now i'm going to get rid of these zones so you can see really clearly but i'm this chart's very simple as well downside i i don't want to trade microsoft downside i'm not gonna lie to you uh but the upside if you get above 427.8 your highs from march 14th i'm very bullish and strong on the name i want to be very clear about that at that level, I'm very, very, very bullish. Below that level, don't want to touch. So again, I'd be waiting for that break and the retest there. Until then, can't do nothing. Google, interesting name, has to get above 151.5. Below that, you can't do much. That's your previous 2021 high. You did make a high above that already, but I think 151.5 is the level you're watching, line in the sand. Um, simple as that, nothing else to really cover there. Um, Amazon's been moving good, holding 177. I keep saying... Ascending triangle on higher time frames. This thing is a long as above 177. The target is 185, 186. Maybe breakout opportunity above 180 locally. Um, but besides that, that's it. Amazon's been a killer, been very strong. Uh, target gone over this one quite a bit above 168. I said it's a long into the 200 SMA. Above the 200 SMA, this thing's going to 181. But honestly, I think this thing could easily run into 200, 205. Uh, I can only say the same things so many times. I love the same names over and over. Uh, and I, you're gonna notice my my analysis, my 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 viewpoints, my overall stock levels don't change often. Um, so these are the main levels here. Meta, you can't do too much when you're under 504. You've seen only weakness below that. If you hold 504, you have room back to the upside. A very strong name, but until then, can't do much. Last one I'm going to cover, Robin Hood. Been a killer. Keep saying this one. If you break out over like 1925, 1950, honest to God, guys, this thing could just continue going crazy. Like they've been a killer. It's been very strong. Coinbase, very strong as well. I think this thing's running past 300. Personal opinion there. A lot of you guys have been asking about Block SQ. Um, this looks, I think Jay covered this today in Discord, which is a little bit abnormal. Uh, but I'm going to tell you right now, uh, it looks like a Wyckoff distribution pattern. You're trying to break back up. Above 83, 84, this thing could rock it. I'd be targeting 145 locally. Um, again, great name. Love what they're doing. Um, they're actually innovating. PayPal's trash, Square all the way. My favorite names. If you have questions, comment down below. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one, traders.